You start off your semester with an introduction to programming. You write your first application, but you start wondering. If computers speak only in binary, how does it understand code? To answer this, we are going to discuss how computers understand code using integers as our starting point and followed by two coding examples from well-known video games. In our case, the simplest code is assigning the integer 10 in a variable called number. But the problem is that number 10 is in the decimal form and must be represented in binary. In other words, our computer can only see the number 10 as on-off switches. Now the translation from a high-level language to machine language is done by the compiler, as it saw the keyword and knew right away that it is an integer that needs 32 bits to be allocated by our RAM. And so, we reserve 32 microscopic electronic switches ready to be set on and off. However, we cannot jump from high-level code to zeros and ones. Instead, the first step is to translate our high-level code to assembly, a low-level language that helps with portability so our code can run on different types of processors. This instruction means that we move 10 to memory location 500, and the binary representation of that instruction is the following. Move is called an operation code, specifying the role of the instruction. 500 is the address, and 10 is our value that we need to store. But one more thing, because 10 is only 4 bits, we pad the remaining 28 bits with leading zeros, and all that is left is execution. This is the architecture of how every general purpose computer works. It is called the fetch decode execute cycle. The control unit fetches the instruction from RAM, decodes it, and thanks to the opcode, it executes it by writing the value to memory address 500. Now in this case, we do not need the ALU, as we are not doing any addition or subtraction. And that is it. That is exactly how our computers understand and process our original line of code. With that out of the way, let's see how programmers actually use this in practice. In the video game Crash Bandicoot, where the player can harvest Wumpa fruit, each time you pick up a fruit, the number gets incremented and displayed on screen. In this demo code, we initialize an integer fruit to zero to count the number of fruits. And in the update method, we see that if the player picks up a fruit, we increment the counter and the same logic applies for destroyed boxes or if the player dies. Another great example is in Doom 1993, where a downed enemy drops ammo so you can collect it for your weapons. From the original source code, the clip pickup logic wouldn't be possible without integers, as the 2D animation or sprite in video game development terminology is triggered by an index. It is done by using a character array to store the names of all sprites. We will use the clip sprite as it is the core of the animation. To identify specific sprites, an enum called sprite enum is defined, where each sprite is assigned an index. In this case, SPR clip is an integer that points to the clip entry in the sprite names array. This index is then used in the states array where it is associated with a specific state, including its frame, duration of the animation, and other properties. Finally, to connect everything, in case the player picks up ammo from an object identified as SPR clip, the game gives the player ammo and displays the message. This essential feature wouldn't be possible without integers, as they serve as an index to access elements in constant time. Integers may be underestimated for being simple, but under the hood, simplicity is what makes complex systems robust and scalable. Thank you so much for watching, until next time.